from the Bluegrass State, it's Flash Friday. Well, this hour could get uh, really heavy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Here we are at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival on the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery in Claremont, Kentucky. God damn it, Monday and Tuesday our show will come to you from the antiquated and pretty much broken down CBS Broadcast Center. Located at the intersection of 57th Street and 11th Avenue in New York City. I will be there. Speaking into a Crosley uh, board with dial pots. That's right. And we'll have um, gooseneck microphones with very squeaky, uh, you know, joints that will squeak on the air and my chair will squeak. And there will be uh, lots of fluorescent lighting, so I'll have a major headache when I'm done working. there. And it has all the warmth of the Pentagon. It's just, other than that, it's fantastic. And if I'm lucky, I'll bump into Katie Couric in the hallway. That's coming Monday and Tuesday. We'll do the show from New York City. And the following week, we're going to be in London, England, for God's sake. Doing our show from London. That is going to be good. And Gary will be there, and Elvis will be there, and uh, a bunch of other people will be there. In fact, uh, one of our guests while we're there is going to be a fellow named Filippo Bartolotta, who is the uh, the guy who set up my tour to Tuscany, where I went this summer. And Filippo is coming in from Tuscany. He's going to fly up to uh, England, and he's going to do the show. And among other things, we're going to talk about uh, his new book, and uh, I'm just going to tell you this much about his book. He can't get a publisher in the United States because it's that controversial. <laughs> Maybe after he appears here, he'll get a publisher. But uh, that's going to be something. And the L.A. Kings playing the Anaheim Ducks, the first time the NHL has played regular season games outside of North America. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. And finally, the caravan of being on the road so much since the beginning of July will come to an end. We'll be, uh, we'll be back in LA to stay for the fall on October 2nd. But you've got shows. Does it really matter where I am? Do you care? There's a show every day, same time. I might be in a different time zone. I might be in a different place. I might be in a studio. I might be in a hotel lobby. You don't know where I'm going to be. Right now I'm at the Jeremiah Beam home. The home of Jim Beam, for God's sake. It's all good. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinated. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. All you do is call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Richard. Father, first time, long time. How you doing? Do you care? Of course I care. Doing great. <laughs> okay, Um, I wanted to talk about uh, Bill Bilicek. Uh, as you know, his, uh, someone on his... Staff well, got caught. Video I don't know. Video I don't know Bill Belichick. Belichick. I know Bill Belichick. There's a guy named Bill Belichick. I know him. Okay, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. Belichick's the coach for the Bengals. Okay, Bill Belichick. I'm sorry, Tom. Um, I want to get your opinion on that because obviously with the referee scandal going on in the NBA, um, obviously that's going to hurt. You know, someone, a fan of 
basketball, whereas it might hurt a fan of the NFL as well. I mean, he was fined $500,000. Um, personally, the Patriots were fined $250,000 and will lose draft picks depending on how far they go on in the season. Don't you think that is kind of light on the guy? Yes. And you weren't listening. I said that before. I mean, the guy should have been suspended without pay for at least half a season. And I think the whole season. Yeah, I mean, well, I heard you, I heard you mention in it sometime earlier this week about suspending him with no communication at all. Right. Practice squad and everything on, so on and so forth. And I mean, it goes back all the way back to when they played St. Louis in the Super Bowl. Um, I watched a documentary because my brother's a Rams fan and I just happened to be watching the documentary that he had saying, um, every time St. Louis got the ball, someone from St. Louis, they were there. It's just, it goes back quite a ways, and I mean, as far as uh, head coach Bill Belichick going down into the Hall of Fame, there's going to be—I still think there's going to be a lot of asterisks by all his Super Bowl wins and all of Tom Brady's uh, victories that he's posted in throughout his career. Well, um, it's really not Tom Brady's fault. No, it's not. Tom Brady's not responsible for this. No, it's not. Brady. And I don't think Tom Brady. Tom Brady's going to the Hall of Fame in the NFL. I don't think that this is going to stop Tom Brady from getting into the Hall of Fame. Okay, well, you think it's going to stop uh, Bill? Well, that's another question, and uh, the answer is it's too soon to tell. But uh, I'm guessing no, uh, because uh, we don't know for how long he was doing it. And because the commissioner of the NFL doesn't seem to think it's as big a deal as uh, some people do because the punishment is relatively light. Yeah. So, uh, and by the way, I, it, this isn't going to hurt the fans as much as it's going to hurt Las Vegas and other gambling interviews. Because yeah. really, the people who are going to not trust the NFL anymore are going to be the people who lay down their hard-earned money betting on it. Mm-hmm. But as far as people who just sit like to sit and watch it on TV, it's not going to stop people. Did you watch the NFL last weekend? I did. It beats in my heart. The air I breathe. This is so special to me. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Matthew Michelle. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I was waiting for a long time. So Hi. I don't really... Oh. Okay, and I'll cut right to the chase. So I came to L.A. like uh, a month ago to find an employer uh, and to get my visa. But uh, that wasn't that easy as I suspected it would be. So uh, I tried everything, and I kept asking people what I should do, what I should do. And the most frequent answer I get, the most frequent recommendation I get, is to get married. And uh, still there? Yes. Okay. So uh, all these girls, I have like five offers pending who are willing to marry with me to keep me in the United States, but of course for a fee. And I was like shocked. I mean, in, back in Europe, a marriage still means something, but here it's apparently something that oh, only is for, in for the money. It's well, strange. wait a minute. You're only in it for the visa. Yeah, that's true. Well, but then, uh, I'm not actually I'm not actually considering marriage to get my visa. I just think it's retarded that in the United States you easy, more easily get your visa by getting married than, for example, I have an MBA. It would take me like almost two years to get my visa, but if I get married, I would have it in six months. That's that's completely crazy. Well, actually, you'd have a visa, but you wouldn't have a green card for a long time, years, in fact. And then uh, you wouldn't uh, be a citizen for many years after that if that's what you wanted to do. No, but uh, the green card itself, uh, I know a girl here who got married, and she got her green card, so not not a work permit or work visa, but her green card, she got it within six months. A temporary green card. Yes, she did, but she didn't get the permanent one. She has to wait another two years to get that. Is that two years or only 18 months? Two years. Two years. Because uh, last it's 18 week, months. Gonna... Wait a second. It's, it's probably 18 months to apply. But if you think you're going to apply and get it the same day, you're you're dreaming. All right. Okay. No, no, it's good. But uh, it was still funny to hear that most people recommended marriage 
uh, before everything else to uh, to get the green card event. Well, there really aren't a lot of other ways to get it uh, any faster uh, because uh, unless you have unique talent, yes, that uh, we can't duplicate in the United States. Uh, like what not... language skills will that do? Like uh, I can speak French, I can speak Dutch, I can speak uh, Italian. Well, if that has value, you have to find a potential employer who will sponsor your citizenship because they need your services. Exactly. But even then, I feel like if I go to an employer and have this interview, I do know these languages and I have an MBA degree, but they're all always like a dozen Americans waiting, queue in line, to get my place because the visa. Well, you are going like to have to. You are going. You are going to have to identify the companies that will find your skills to be valuable. One example of a company would be uh, Royal Dutch Shell, for example. Uh, there's a company that is based in Holland and England. Um, I'm sure they need customers. Um, sorry, they need employees. I'm sorry who can speak Dutch and other related European languages because they do so much business around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to start to identify the companies that might have a use for your business skills and, and your particular talents. Right. But that that's the main problem. Uh, I haven't been completely honest with you. thing is that uh, I came exactly to L.A., especially, to uh, give it a shot at acting. Well, and the thing yeah, is, pal, you're, do you're yeah. done. That's not gonna, the only way you're going to get a visa is by marrying somebody. No, no, I know, I know, this I know. But uh, I, I met, met this girl like uh, a week ago, and she got married three times already to just for the money and to keep her friends in the United States, and I thought it was pretty... I, I can't by, the way, if the, by the way, she's taking a real risk, because with all the emphasis on uh, homeland security in this country and the concern about terrorism... If they discover that she's doing that, she's in a world of hurt. That's illegal. You can't do that. Yeah, I thought so as well. I mean, she she told me that if it would uh, get discovered, she she would go to jail for ten years or something, and the guy in question would get deported. And if any of those people that she married decided to turn on her and call the INS and report her, she's done. But why would what would they do it? I mean, they they want their green card. They want to stay here. They would get deported if they. They snitch on her. Well, let's right? say there was some hitch in getting the green card. It could be oh, anything. Okay, like that. Yeah, yeah okay. See what point. if they decide to blame her? Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I see what you're getting to, but uh, I'm getting at. But the thing is, so while trying to get a shot at acting, uh, I, I would like to be in the Los Angeles region because this is obviously where the action is going down. Yes, but wait a minute. I mean, are you a noted actor in Europe? No, that's why. No. I, I swear, I, I'm a lawyer and I have an MBA degree. I have nothing no. to do with acting. I will in Europe. never. That's you, I'm telling you, you are barking up the wrong tree. It's not going to happen. Huh. But the thing is, if I find an employer for that MBA degree, I will be stuck in that kind of business, and I won't have time to do the acting. That's that's what's bothering me. Well, pal, if you wanted to do this, the way to do it is to build up an acting resume in Europe, then get an acting gig here by coming over for a couple of weeks and auditioning for jobs or whatever. But you're doing it backwards. You came here first. Yeah, to, to do a reconnaissance tour. I mean, All right, uh, but I, 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 I spent a year in Europe finding out and figuring out uh, what ways there were to get a visa. And no one could give me a good answer, not even the U.S. Embassy located in Belgium. Well, forget that. You, no, if, you want, Sorry. If, you want a, if you want the good answers, you've got to call an immigration attorney. Uh, yeah, but you I could, already did that. And they, they told me, indeed, to, to find an employer here. But, uh, they told you what I told you. Yeah, they told you what you told me. Right. That's exactly. All right, yeah, okay. But the thing is, uh, one more question about uh, the visa. If I should get a notable, become a notable actor in Europe, you think that would help me get a visa here? Yeah, but, but there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. No, exactly. But, but even then, I mean... Uh, 
doing the auditions. I mean, I went here for auditions just to see what what would happen. And going on tourist visa to these auditions, it's like going to an audition in a wheelchair. I mean, it doesn't help. They ask for a social security number. I can give them one. Right, they want to know if you're a member of SAG, and you don't know what SAG is. I know. Yeah, I know. Screen Actors Guild. I found that out. Yeah. Uh huh. That's right. And uh, when they find out you're not a member of SAG or AFTRA, and uh, you don't have a social security number, uh, that's going to make things pretty difficult. Exactly. You have to be. You have to be. You have to have a resume. You have to have a list of experience from Europe. You can't come here and try to win the lottery. They won't have it. But I do have a small list of things and acting resume from Europe. That's what I sent. No, no. I mean, were you on, like, well-known shows? Did you make a lot of money? Were you on the cover of magazines, uh, the equivalent of, like, OK or Hello magazine or any of those things? No, probably not, right? No, no. That's what they're looking for. All right, damn it. Then, uh, okay. I would get back to Belgium anyway next week. So. Oh, you realize yeah, you don't have to go back to Belgium. Yeah, you could use your MBA, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I, I really have this dream and this passion about acting, and I always saw this law, law degree and MBA degree as a backup plan. Shouldn't I get, uh, shouldn't I make it in acting? Well, it's your ticket to come to Los Angeles. Yeah, true, but if I, yeah, but if I get in, in uh, that circuit, which is a wrong business, then I wouldn't be setting my mind on acting. I would take yeah. another... Flight. You would only have to do it for a couple of years, and in the meantime, you could be taking acting classes. Uh, you could be uh, perfecting uh, your style, what people are looking for in the United States, which may be different from what you're used to. And How long would, would that take in general? I mean, to get here with the MBA degree, get an employer, and then after... Well, years, finding an employer, I can't tell you how long that'll take. It depends on your resourcefulness at uh, find, identifying companies that could use your skills, getting interviews with them, and then letting them know you're coming from another country. Uh, since you're in the United States, uh, you certainly are conveniently located to come in for interviews and meet with people. And I would recommend you don't limit your uh, looking to Los, Los Angeles area, though uh, I certainly would put most of the, I'd uh, find out who all the Fortune 500 companies are in Southern California and start uh, offering yourself around to the various human resources departments. All right. So you're saying shoot for the MBA degree and don't mind about acting right now. Just see later on. For right. The MBA. Because let me tell you something else. If you are the most famous actor in, I've been to Belgium and it's beautiful. Okay, I've been there. But if you were the most famous actor in Belgium, where would that put you? Nowhere. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. A, it is a small and beautiful country, and I loved uh, Brussels dearly. I just thought it was fantastic. But, I don't like Brussels that much. Well, it's our, I, yeah, it's our capital. It's a strange, it's a strange country. I mean, with three different languages. Uh, yes. Things going on, but uh, no, Brussels, Antwerp is much better, man. Yeah, Next well, time you're I, in uh, Belgium, go to Antwerp. I've, I've got listeners, by the way. I got a call last week from Belgium from a listener who's listening on the Internet. Well, I'll be listening to I, I learned about your show like uh, three weeks ago when I was in the, in the car, and I listen to it all the time. It's quite fun. And actually, it's also funny to see such notable difference between girls here and girls in Europe. Oh, I yes. mean, I, fi I find them here much more... Okay, girls are all the same, they say, but, I mean, here they are much more superficial, like, Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And they don't mean a word about it, what they're saying. And, uh, I, I don't know, they, they sound kind of fake. Well, that's and why I'm, you have I'm, to, that's why, as an actor, you have to perfect your skills at saying meaningless stuff to chicks so they'll uh, give you the sex you're looking for. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll see about that later. <laughs> first, first the visa. <laughs> All right. Good luck on that, Chris. Let me know how you make out. And thank you for the helpful information. Nice chat. No problem. I'm here to help. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You see any other headlights on out there yet, Valerie? I'm hoping they hurry up because I want to I wanna flash somebody. If not, I think I'll just flash anybody. You'll just flash anybody. You don't care. You're ready to show them. I'll have to tell them. Put on your lights, lift it. Oh, yeah, this got a guy. He, he hears you. Oh, really? Yeah, he just turned on his face, and he just came right by me. Did you show him? 
He's a Tom Rackus listener. I love that. <laughs> oh, God, I just flashed it. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones. By the way, we're getting calls about this. If you'd like to get involved with Luke Robitaille's Holker Charity at the MGM Grand Hotel, it's going to be next week. Call this number, 310 441 9720. Got that number? 310 441 9720. And uh, I'll tell you something about Luke, and I've known Luke for a while. Um, when he gets involved with these charities, he's he's completely into them. You know, he doesn't do these for promotion or self promotion or any of the usual reasons so many people do charity events. Luke is really involved in this stuff. And. Uh, uh, you know, you you know when he puts his name on something like this that uh, money is going to be raised and the charity is going to get the money, and uh, you also know you're going to have a good time. So uh, give him a call, 310-441-9720. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Jonathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? Great. Great. Um, I want to ask you a question. I'm uh, currently uh, in the Army, and uh, I know uh, your feelings on uh, getting married, but uh, being in such a, a different circumstance, I was wondering uh, what your feelings on being married would be if uh, um, a person such as myself were in the Army. I especially think you shouldn't get married, I, I, even more for you than anybody else. Uh, why is that? Because uh, you have not achieved in life what you're looking to achieve. You are too young. Um, being in the military doesn't mean you need to be married more than other people. Uh, this is a period of time in your life when you should be having fun, and wearing a uniform is the best way to have fun. Women love that. <laughs> yeah, but that's not really why I joined. You know, I really no. I didn't say that's why country. you. I didn't say that's why you joined, but it's certainly one of the benefits. <laughs> yeah, I guess that could be true. Uh, there is also a very high level of divorce. And infidelity in the military. Very, very true, and that's uh, one thing I had to uh, think about long and hard about before well, uh, before I got uh, got with my wife. So you see, you do not need to be married. And in fact, what do you actually want to do for a career? Uh, what, one more time, I'm sorry. What do you want to do for a career? Uh, I want to work with computers for a career. All right. Well, I always say, until you've gotten uh, to your dream job, you should not be married. Mm -hmm. All right. Because women are not tolerant of the work and the time you have to put in to become successful. Okay. All right. And they will generally slow you down, if not stop you. I don't know. I I just uh, think it helps a lot to, to have a wife uh, when you're married, uh, you know, for the uh, mostly moral support, you know, going away. Why do you need moral support? Why, why, why can't you support yourself? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's a good uh, good point of view. Can you take me out, Lacey Peterson stuff? <laughs> of course I can. Hammer. Hey. Hammer. Hammer, Mitchell. Now, you know, we talked about that Carl's Jr. Patty Mel commercial the other day, and we had the guy who, the rapper, who uh, did the music. He didn't write it, but he was like the rapper. And he told us that he was the guy, he was the voice, and then there were two actors who played the part of the rappers. Here's one of them. Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? It's Dan. How you doing, Dan? Good, man. So what is up in America, dude? Tell me. Why, why, is, why are the Tennessee teachers, why are they upset about this? I. You know what? I can't prove... And would never allege that CKE restaurants would pay a yutz like that to start making statements. All I will say is that I would have done it if I were there. <laughs> <laughs> because that commercial got hundreds, if not thousands, of free plays on shows like mine. Yeah. Uh, because it was made into a controversy. And you had, to, had that guy never stepped up to the plate and complained, or the other teachers in Tennessee never done that, 
the commercial would have gone away because Carl's Jr. has a new commercial every three weeks, every four weeks. There's a new campaign. They're always pushing something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's always kind of the same. But kind this one? looking guy or hot girl, yeah. Yeah. There's a hot girl dripping a burger all over herself one week, and there's a guy who can't decide between pastrami and a hamburger another week, you know. And, um, so this was another in a series. By the way, Carl's Jr., I think, makes some of the best spots. I really do. Who's the agency on that spot? Uh, what were they called? Mendelssohn Zion. Mendelssohn Zion. Mendelssohn Zion, okay. Uh, it was the, the director was the guy who did uh, a couple Britney Spears videos. <laughs> is that uh, so? And, uh, the, uh, who's that new one? The um, Rihanna with the umbrella song. Yes, he did that video. Yes, uh, with uh, Jay Z. Yeah, yeah Jay Z's really. Jay Z's in the beginning of that video. Yeah, I mean, it was a trip because it was all white actors, but it was filmed at Venice High School, which is like ninety-five percent Latino. It was a trip. <laughs> Fantastic. Trip. Now, you didn't actually, did you have any speaking lines in that spot? Or you were, you were uh, dubbed, the voice was dubbed in from somebody else? What happened? Yeah, I got a half second. I got a half second of guy behind me, my friend says, check out the buns. And then I say, back is flat. And that, that's it. <laughs> did you have and any it idea? Funny. It was funny because the whole thing should have only taken one day. But because they were so scared about, you know, standards getting down on them for the girl. They kept refilming, and then they'd look at it and go, no, nah, you know, she's showing her butt. No, we got to do this. We got to make her skirt longer. So it ended up taking a full two days, and we were there like 12, 13 hours. So what you're telling me is they knew they were in for trouble when they were filming it. They knew they were going to get in trouble. Yeah, there was a whole collection, like 10 guys who I, I didn't know who they were, some suits, and um, they were just like, no, no, this isn't going to work. But finally at the end, they were like, yeah. We're pretty confident in this, and then this happens. Wow. Now, uh, how many spots have you done before? Is this uh, your first big one, or have you done a bunch? No, this is it. This is all I've ever done. How'd you get the I, gig? Uh, I did a – you ever heard of that band Stained? Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did one of their videos that unfortunately was like the worst video they ever made. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know – Of course, really of course – and I got paid 100 bucks. So They had to get the director from a Britney Spears video or a Rihanna video because it was filmed like a music video. It was not a normal commercial. Oh, yeah. I mean, the setup these guys had was outrageous. Just the crew it was like, you know, 150 people. It was just everywhere. It was nuts. Wow. Absolutely nuts. And how many times did you have to reshoot your own part? Uh, I probably did it like three hours. Of just doing like, all right, now say the whole thing into this angle. Say the whole thing into this angle. And then I didn't even, I, the girl did it by herself. When she's dancing, she was in the room all by herself with the director and like a light guy. And that was it. So what they hire from like the Spearmint Rhino or something? Where they? <laughs> 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 no, she's, uh, she had some in because uh, there's a lot of good looking girls at the audition and she's, you know, she's dating some guy that was in one movie, and, you know, that's enough to get a name for somebody. So she, there we go. she squeezed her way in, yeah. So, uh, and I, and I feel bad. I feel bad because she's gone now. That's it. You know, the teachers, they won their little battle. No, but don't feel though, bad because you – know, I mean, Wait, 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 wait. wait. Don't, don't feel bad because uh, your part of the spot is still running, and that means you're still going to continue to get paid. That's true. Well, uh, uh. Kinda. It's because they're doing a thing where it's uh, it's not national. It's wild spot, which means I get paid like a tenth of what national would be. Yeah. So well, at that's... the end of the day, uh, I'm gonna have like you know three grand. So that's rent. Hey, that's hey. good, and and that goes into your demo reel, which is good. Yeah. And wow. what do you what do you normally do for a living when you're not uh, when you're not a wigger? <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten a lot of crap for that. Um, <laughs> my uh, my girlfriend's dad he uh, he gets a lot of he's he's really into the whole barter thing. So he gets like uh, like lots of stuff. Like he'll get like you know two hundred vacuums, and then we sell them on eBay. And it's actually a really good way to make money. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. You never know when this radio thing's gonna go south. Exactly. Yeah, you've just been on a couple of years, right? A couple of years. Yeah. 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 
Well, hey, Tom, I really appreciate it, man. I, you're really a good voice to hear, and uh, there's just way too much Republican crap going on in the United States right now. We just need more guys like you. Right. Real men. Exactly, damn it. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Dan. Yeah. All right, Dan, one of the uh, one of the white rappers in the uh, Carl's Jr. Flat Buns commercial. There he is. And he was not actually rapping. He was he was uh, lip syncing. We just talked to The Voice the other day. All these guys listen to the show. That's amazing. I love it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You're my general. You are the general for the army of men against the war for the pacification of men in America. That's right. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. From the Kentucky Bourbon Festival at Claremont, Kentucky. Here we are on the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery. Drinking bourbon and doing a radio show. This is Chris. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> Hello, Tom. What's Hello. happening? Not much, Chris. Listen, Tom, I, I, I just had a call in. I love your show. I just had a call in because... Uh, you're absolutely wrong about Jim Cramer, and that's a surprise because you're normally correct on most topics. All right, if, it, if I'm wrong, Barron's is wrong, so tell us well, how Barron's was wrong. Well, here's the thing, okay? The, the big fight over at Barron's is who, who advertises at Barron's, okay? It's the big fun companies, Fidelity, Vanguard, you know, so on, okay? They advertise constantly through Barron's, okay? It's a lot of money for Barron's. So Barron's was there just to write something bad about Kramer because Kramer gives people hope, okay? Well, why, would mutual funds, why, want, why would mutual fund companies want people not to have hope? Well, no, it's not hope. It's hope that I can do it myself. I can pick stocks instead of just buying their mutual funds. Yeah, but, but then statistics don't lie. Which statistics were misquoted okay. in this article? Okay, well, here's the thing, okay? Their, their whole analysis on, you know, the, per, the, the overall performance of Kramer's picks is just completely wrong. I mean, how exactly would they go about, you know, judging if one of Kramer's picks actually made money? I mean, do, do we give it a week? Do we give it two weeks? Do we give it three weeks, a month, you know, and so on? You know, well, and Kramer doesn't I, exactly I encourage in Kramer. Article, Tom. Kramer doesn't Tom, exactly encourage long-term holding of stocks. Well, I mean, obviously that's not. I mean, here's the thing, okay? No one has a crystal ball on Wall Street, all right? right? That's Kramer exactly including Jim Kramer. Best... Go on, Tom. Including Jim Kramer. Yeah, of course. No one does. No one has a crystal ball. I wish I did. I run a hedge fund, okay? You sound like I Jim Kramer. But, but no one has a crystal ball, okay? What Kramer does is he teaches people, if you listen, and you're not just like some bozo that's going to just, you know, buy one of his picks and... Which you know, most people it, are. It forever. Yeah. He tells people what, you know, what to look for when to sell, which is the most important thing. Not necessarily when to buy, but when to sell. So all these stories about the millions of people on Wall Street who are making a fortune, shorting Jim Cramer's picks, these are a lie. Every one of these no. stories is a lie. No, no, I know people that do that in the business, and, right. you know, they, yeah, it's, there's a lot of money there. And they're making more money than the average Schmendrick, who is uh, writing down uh, the, the ticker symbols of everything Jim Cramer is recommending, aren't they? Come on. Well, come on, Tom, you're, you're smart enough to know that you just can't buy <laughs> something that someone says and just leave it. But you that's know? what people, and, pal, and when, and Kramer had something going for him, all right? He was a hedge fund manager, and he was one of the, one of the best on Wall Street. He performed over 20% every year. Every year. You know how tough that, that is? That has nothing to and do with whether the picks cool. he announces he's on television. What talking about. How did he perform? It's not the matter of whether he knows what he's talking about. It's that the, okay. uh, you have, so, you see, he, he's so claiming I'm ignorance. article saying that this guy's a phony. It's not that they said he was a phony. The word phony doesn't appear anywhere in the article. It says that if well, you he, bought his stock picks, you right. would do you would not do as well as you would in an index fund. Right. Well, and by the way, Barron's, Barron's, if Barron's was so concerned about mutual funds and their advertisers and what they think, uh, then why do they give their own stock picks all the time? Listen, Barron, that's the, that's the whole debate, okay? These funds I'm asking you. Picks. 
a ton of money. Barron's gives their own stock picks. Why does a Barron's just say we're going to stop giving stock picks because you should buy mutual funds from our advertisers? Why do they put stock picks in Barron's if they believe that they, they're going to? There'd be nothing else in the in the newspaper. That's, that's right. The point, Tom. Tom, that's the By the way, point. by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way. Here we go again. By the way. By the way. Okay. Are you ready? Ready for this? All right. All right, this is what I'm going to tell you. And Kramer outperformed not, any... Are you not hearing me? Are you pretending not to hear me? Or do we have a technical problem again? What's the deal here? Listen. Now, now, I I actually do think there is something fishy about that article appearing in Barron's, but it's not what you think. What's, what's your take on it? Uh, if you read the Wall Street Journal and Barron's regularly, you will start to notice a pattern that has been showing up in both newspapers. Rupert Murdoch has just purchased, although oh, does right, although does not yet own the Wall Street Journal and Barron's. He doesn't own them yet. He bought Dow Jones. He's going to own these newspapers. Of course. And uh, isn't Rupert it interesting? Isn't it interesting but, that wait? Let me, well, let me finish my whole theory, and then you can criticize it or say, "All right." Last week, the Wall Street Journal had a story about a girl who was signed to Hollywood Records, a division of the Walt Disney Company. And the people at the Walt Disney Company, according to this article, uh, pretended that she was uh, just some girl on YouTube, when in reality she was, uh, uh, her videos were being produced by Hollywood Records. And the Wall Street Journal uh, is doing this story, but uh, it's pretty well known that the Walt Disney Company has been an arch rival of Fox for years. And now you have uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch about to start the Fox Business Channel, which is going to be a competitor to CNBC. CNBC has Wall Street Journal content on it, and suddenly Barron's decides to do a story ripping somebody on CNBC. I believe these are people trying to curry favor with Rupert Murdoch in advance of his taking over. That's what I think is happening at Barron's. Having said that, I believe every word they wrote was true. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I've, I've I've heard. Yeah, I mean, the Rupert Murdoch, you know, stories are, are always out there. They're you know the. Rupert Murdoch conspiracy stories are always out there. I mean, that's fine because the guy's trying to take over the world. Well, I just I read these two I read these two papers regularly, and now all of a sudden, stories uh, about Rupert Murdoch enemies are starting to appear in these newspapers. Right. Uh, they're starting to do exposés on the enemies of Rupert Murdoch. Now, I don't think this is an accident. Just like the New York Post has been ripping the New York Daily News for thirty-one years, ever since Rupert Murdoch first bought the New York Post. I think the same thing is going to happen at these publications. And they'll have a Sudoku puzzle, and they'll uh, have uh, a bingo game, too. <laughs> well, yeah, Tom, listen, I, I don't doubt what you just said. Uh, that may very well be true. But I'll tell you, of the people on Wall Street, the people who work, the brokers, the managers, and so forth, okay, they of the people out there, Jim Cramer is one of the, the, the most respected people on Wall Street because he did it. He yeah, but if he walked into a boardroom and started throwing furniture and screaming at people, he would not have that respect, okay? okay? And, and for Barron's, I just want to make one, last, one point. For Barron's to write an article and say that the, the, whole, the, the whole sum of what Cramer does on his show is just stock picks is ridiculous because that man is given... That's not what they said. All they said was that if you... Followed his stock picks, you would have been better off at an index right. fund. Right. But that's Tom, all they said. But Tom, implied in that is that that's the only reason why Kramer's there. Needless to say, they did not write. No, you know, you know the only. By the way, the only reason Kramer is on. I don't think I don't think CNBC could care less about the accuracy of his stock picks. The guy throws furniture, and now they have viewers at night. Okay, that's all they care about. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a business, too. But what I'm saying is right. that Kramer made it on Wall Street. He knows what he's talking about. He was one of the best managers on Wall Street. That doesn't mean that the stock picks that he gives out on his show are going to make people rich. I would like to meet one person who got rich watching this show. Well, you will. If you listen to what he says on his, stro on his show, not necessarily, you know, buying a, a pick that, that he throws out or people call it an ass during the, what's it called, lightning round, whatever. A lightning like, round. Sell. Long. Buy. You know, buy, buy, buy. Sell, sell, sell. Buy, buy, buy. Sell, come, on. Okay. come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, please. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com. Our thanks to the folks at Jimpy, baby. The Tom Likas Show.